Hi there. Um, I seem to have put up quite a lot of YouTube videos this year, uh, but this one is um, the result of several months of uh, research and uh, development, one might call it. Um, and it's been an ongoing project. I've been working with a friend and colleague of mine, uh, and it's now, to all intents and purposes, complete. Um, and, and what it is, is actually, I mean, as 78 RPM enthusiasts, um, which we all are, um, surely one of the things which we would most like to do is to make our own 78s. And uh, here's a, a, a disc, and uh, we're going to make one now. And um, I would say that uh, all this research that's gone into it is summarised on a web page. Uh, to which a link is provided in the uh, introduction to this video. So I won't be messing around too much in the video, we'll just be going ahead and doing it. I hope you find it uh, interesting. Uh, if you want to know any more, look at the web page. So, um, well, let's see, what have we got? What we've essentially got here is the, the skeleton, that's the top plate, of a uh, wartime disc cutting machine, 78 RPM made by the MSS company uh, in the UK which has been transplanted into a, a, a new box with a few bits of ancillary stuff which is new to it uh, but um, it's, it, all the details of that are on the website um, so do have a look at the web page if you're interested and um, we've made some quite a lot of modifications to it uh, again the details are on the website but uh, why should we want to make our own 78s? Aren't there hundreds of thousands, millions of them out there uh, which we can look at and find and buy at record collectors fairs or you know buy on eBay and swap with other collectors? Uh, why should we want to make our own? Uh, well I, there's maybe various reasons but the one most important to me is that there are many records which we will never be able to own on 78 RPM because they're either too rare, too expensive uh, or perhaps they were never even issued in the first place on 78 but there's a lot of stuff on YouTube and there's a lot of MP3s that our friends send us and say hey listen to this isn't it great and yes it is great and we we want to have it on a 78 um, so that's why I have uh, you know, done this thing and uh, Having drawn on a lot of experience from other people on YouTube, all those credits are on the web page. So um, what we're going to do is make a 78 of a couple of things I've just downloaded from YouTube, uh, both of which tickle my fancy. And um, I'll never own the originals, uh, but I could make uh, a 78 of them. The first thing we need to do is to prepare our audio file, whatever it is. I've got two here. Uh, this is diamond cut. And um, uh, they're both Edison diamond discs. Uh, this is the top one. Yes, it's uh, Chinese Jumble by the California Ramblers, uh, recorded for Edison but never issued. So we aren't going to get a copy of that, are we? That's a good reason for making a 78. And the one on the bottom here is uh, another California Ramblers. really gorgeous version of Shake or Shake That Thing um, and uh, I don't think I'm going to get a copy of that so I'm going to make a California Rambler 78 with those two sides on. So we've prepared our audio sides the next thing to do is to prepare the disc on which they are to be cut and this is a 10 inch um, disc of polycarbonate plastic which is widely used by people on YouTube um, though usually a bit smaller because it's the reverse of CDs and DVDs which are made, essentially made of polycarbonate so we had some 10 inch discs uh, made and they're not terribly expensive um, so we just need to prepare it yes um, it's coated of course with protective film it has got a hole in the middle this was, these were cut out by a CNC cutting machine uh, the hole is rather undersized, so the first thing we need to do is take a reamer and uh, ream it out a little bit. 
so that it will fit our spindle and of course we mustn't make it too large otherwise it will wobble about. Well the hole's the right size now so I've just got this uh, countersink and I'll just take the, the edges off so we get a nice uh, even, even hole there and then it's a question of removing the, uh, the protective coating uh, which is actually uh, quite fiddly um, ah, there we go one side off then we take the other side off uh, bear with me ah, here we go we've now got a lovely clear um, 10 inch polycarbonate disc uh, already to be recorded on um, well it's not quite ready yet because what we need to do is uh, get an aerosol of furniture polish and just give it a little blast um, like this and wipe it across because what we want is a nice fine film of a slightly waxy um, substance which helps the embossing point, it's not a cutting point, it's an embossing point we want it to adhere to the surface of the record a little bit like I call it vacuum fusion, I don't think it really is that Uh, but it works much better with a, a film of a kind of oily or waxy substance on the surface. Place the disc on the turntable. There's a little brass uh, brush here with a screw in it to hold the disc uh, so that it won't uh, slip as it were while we cut it. And then we can turn the turntable on like so. It goes at about 80 rpm. Well, that's near enough to 78. We lower the uh, arm with the cutting head on it here. Uh, now comes a very important adjustment um, this knob and this meter control the groove pitch and uh, so I'll switch on the power supply and you'll see the meter goes over to the far side and this represents a fine cut groove which will run for the best part of four minutes if we want something uh, less we can reduce it to there that will give us about three and a half minutes if we reduce it to there um, we'll get uh, about two minutes fifty seconds but these editions of course are long so we're going to put it in the finest groove pitch well uh, what about the cutters in the cutting head well, actually they're not cutters they're, they emboss they don't cut well they're very simple we've got some here um, they're made out of uh, 1.5 millimeter high-speed steel just under three quarters of an inch long with an 84 degree cone ground on the top and they're easy to make and extremely cheap and that's all shown uh, on the web page so we've got one in there and I should think they last quite a long time because uh, high speed steel is pretty hard and polycarbonate plastic is, is pretty soft of course another very important adjustment is the recording level um, and so we need to set that, I'll just kick the file in This is a reasonable level. It's adjustable by this preset here, but I've uh, fixed it so that this should be a good level for cutting. Well, here we go. Discs rotating. Uh, everything's ready to go. I now lower the cutter into position and let it rotate for one or two revolutions. I'll run round behind and start the file. the boring bit uh, we've got to wait for it to finish and without trying to enjoy it too much but listening for any defects or anything that's going wrong marvelous thing this listen to this oh marvelous 
Now for the important bit, putting the runoff groove on. Give it a couple of revs and then speed it up. Switch it off. And then let the cutter or the embosser dig down to Australia. You can just hear it. It's making a nice deep groove there. Which, with any luck, uh, will be a lot groove. Well, so far, so good. <laughs> So uh, our first side's okay. Okay, here comes side two. Yeah, it's a it's a piece of cake really, but there's quite a lot of work gone into it uh, by me and my colleague Mike. Not to mention all the people who've pioneered this on uh, YouTube. Well, here we go with the second side. Uh, lower the cutter. Give it three or four revs round here, kick off the file now. One thing I do like to do is wash off this film which helped the, um, the stylus to emboss the disc uh, because if it dried it might clog the grooves up so um, I'll just wash it. Uh, the, the stuff in this particular um, sort of polish, Mr. Sheen, whatever that is, uh, does seem to be water soluble so you can get it off and then you can dry the record like a dinner plate and since it's plastic <laughs> with any look it won't break and uh, there you are a very nice clean shiny disc well after all that hard work with not a little stress uh, now comes the fun bit you can stick your labels on it and, uh, you know, who said that a label actually has to tell you uh, what's on the record? There's no hard and fast rule about that. Um, I know what it is, and actually now you know what it is. Cutting 78s is really a, a piece of cake with a little bit of preparation. Cheers!